No, I wasn't surprised. I know what I wanted to do. And I know what this um, organization is trying to do. And I want to win. They want to win, so I want to be back. At the end of the season, how long ago did you see you like you know, five games down the line or something like that? What did you like feel like maybe you might be some things that you lost during the last couple of games? When did you get the sense that maybe that was going to be a big thing for you guys and that was going to be bad? I mean, when did you feel like that was the that when the decision they gonna be bad? When did you feel like that? I didn't ever feel like that, you know. Yeah, like the, my contract was expiring. I didn't ever say like I felt like it was up in my last game here. You know, it was expiring. Everybody has an expiring date, so it was expiring date for me. Pretty fast. I mean, I, I, like I said, I knew what I wanted to do. You know, I talked to Zach early on. You know, I don't want to go to a team that losing and now got a, like a quarterback. I got a top five quarterback in in the league. Why I leave? You know, we we one play away from going to Super Bowl again. So why would I leave? I want to win. I mean, it means everything, you know, your D.C., this will be my fifth year with him. So it's huge. You get to play fast and keep on elevating your game and stuff. I think working with Lou every year, you can see in the league that I have improved. So why would I try to go somewhere else and learn a new system, probably slow down, and not keep on steady improving as a player? You know, I want to be an impact player and keep on improving with my game. So that's why I came back. Did you Lou. talk to him at all about more slowing down opportunities? Um, it's – it works out, you know. It may not always work as what I want to say. You know, as a player, you're a competitor. You want to be on the field every opportunity. You think you can make an opportunity to make a big play or something. So we haven't talked about it recently, but if the if the opportunity presents itself, I want to be out there. What's part of being up there now? Last week, that's something I mentioned to Connor Dunn. You were like, you know, like, you want to be able to want to be up there right now. You can say that. I mean, I know I can be a third down linebacker. You know, when Logan went down last year, I played third down. So it wasn't a big adjustment. I just wanted to play more. You know, it can be first, second, third, fourth down when we got to make a big stop. I want to be out there. Have you spoken with BJ Hill about how to change types? Um, I was with, actually I was with BJ Hill the other day. We work out. We train together. So um, he called me after I, I signed and stuff, after I told him I signed it. So, he didn't tell me exactly when I need to cut his hair, but it's something need to be happen soon. When you're going to cut it? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you talked about, you know, you know what you wanted with, with winning. You know, some of the tweets you had, like, from last month, like, love is love, winning is contagious. Were those kind of signs that you wanted to be here and that you wanted to stay here? I want to say, like, every tweet is about football, you know. you Everybody got other stuff going on in their life, you know. Love is love. Like, some people can just love you, but if you loyal to somebody, loyalty runs deeper than love. You know, he can somebody can just love you, but if you got loyalty and lo- love together, then it's stronger. Yeah, they always say the goal for NFL players is to get to the end of the contract and then maybe you're up there signing, but is it all said and true that your dream is to be an NFL player and getting that second contract is all just together? I mean, everybody say the second, but you want to get to the third. And be a Super Bowl champion. Who's the judgment head coach when you're up there against the Cardinals? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, it is. <laughs> that's fine, man. <laughs> that's a good question. You know, I mean, factors may play into that. You know, if he went somewhere else, will Lou come after me and let me play with him? Um, or will I come back? I don't know. To be determined. I mean, it's huge. You know, them two guys are just a huge pieces of the defense. You know, the back end, they got so much communication back there. You having veteran guys knowing football, you know, playing so much football. I know I have faith in Lou and them making somebody that fit them shoes, like step in, step in that position and make the fit the role for Jesse and Vine. You know, we got Dax and we got a couple more guys that that's got to be ready to play. Zone, high and low zone. 
you know, how do you see yourself kind of filling that role as a leading guard for red zone defense? I mean, that's why I say, like, as a defensive player, as a linebacker or the, the safeties and stuff, we communicate always down the field. We know what type of uh, schemes, like, you know, with shot zone, you know, the tendency of what area they like to attack you and stuff, you know. It's different zones of the area they run in certain routes. You can't run certain routes in the different areas of the field because it's limited field. So the red zone, is it'll be easy. We, you know, Coach Bench does that. So it's a linebacker coach. So he, he always give us the red zone stuff that we need to do. Yeah, Lou just um put um uh, players in the right position, you know. He put us in the right position to make plays, you know. He he does it that well with everybody on the defense. He plays to the strength. So our strength, so we'll be straight. My first person I called, I was I called my mom. You know, she always liked my rock, so I always call my mom. She was very excited, like she always been, you know, just being a mom that take care of her three boys. She just was happy for me. Nah, we really, we really ain't talked too much about it, you know. It ain't really settled in. It ain't really kicked me in yet that I'm like I signed my second contract, but something will happen soon. I mean, when I was young, I always chased out behind my brother, my oldest brother. I always wanted to be around him. You know, the little brother, I always want to be around the big brother. So he really introduced the football to me. And then we always talk about once we get rich, we'll do this and that. But, you know, once you get the money, you be like, ah, you ain't really do all that. <laughs> so, yeah. So. I mean, yeah, it feel different. You know, when you was a rookie, you was excited, like, just to be here. But now, once you're in the league, you think about you want more. You just don't want just the money. You want the Super Bowl. You want the winning that come with it. You want everything that's come with it. You know, you don't play this game just for the money. You play because you want a league of legacy. You want to be a Super Bowl champion. You know, once you leave here, people ain't really always talk about the money that you made. They talk about you was a Super Bowl champion. You gave it all for your team. And you left a legacy behind. Yeah. You know, obviously, Jermaine, as a team, you know, we've talked about Lou Anarumo and how close you are with him and how much of a factor that would be. How much of a factor is it to steal this team from Eric Gordon this year? It's a huge factor. You know, we one player away from winning a, a Super Bowl. You know, the the Super Bowl was one play away. And then Kansas City was just one play away, one stop, whatever the case may be, to going to the Super Bowl and competing. For the championship. Back to what you said, the legacy. Let's talk about Super Bowl. What do you, what do you envision? What do you hope your legacy is? I mean, how far do you want to go over the next couple of years? Um, get back to the Super Bowl and compete and win in it. You know, I got three years, so I'll see what I can do with Joe, with Joe for three years. Um, that'd be huge for him, you know, to be able to see a guy that worked so hard, you know, one of the supreme linebackers in his league, you know, see, see the opportunity for him to get a stitching and be able to play along with him, you know. That's a great guy that I played beside of him. I'm comfortable playing beside him. I feed off of him. He feed off of me. It'd be huge for him to get it done. No, I don't really worry about that too much. I know that he want to be here. His guys want to be here. So I just knew that if Joe Burrow will be around for a lot of years, then I need to be around to win. How much of, I mean, you mentioned that, obviously. How much of that do you get a sense when you're speaking to Devontae Smith or other guys around the league in terms of how much of that is like motivation? Some guys want to take these chances. Do you get a sense of that? How much of that is motivation? Yeah, absolutely. You know, all the guys always talk about they want to be around a quarterback. They want to win, you know. You see Devontae Adams wanted his A-Rod to come to 
the um to Las Vegas for him to win. So I think it's huge for you to be around a quarterback that can can lead us. You know, he he led me from dark days. You know, the first two years was terrible without Joe. You know, so he gave that bright light in the tunnel. So I want to ride this wave as long as I can. No, I haven't. I mean, he's a versatile guy, you know, a guy that has all the tangible to be great. You know, it's up to him to fill the, the, the role of Jesse Bates or Vaughn, whatever role he has. You know, it's up to him. You know, guy that did sit back and got to learn. You know, I didn't get to do that late, late in my rookie year, get to learn from veteran guys that showed the way how to be a great talent in the league. So it would be huge for him to take some little pieces of the game and then apply it to his, you know, He'll be a huge addition for us this year. I know he'll make an immediate impact. Do you feel respected uh, in the locker room just by, by your teammates uh, in terms of leadership and teaching the ball? Do you think that that's important to you? Yeah, it is. Everybody has a voice, you know, from top down to bottom. You know, you want to have a voice, opinions about things. So it's huge, like, um, a player to respect you or you can take an input from another leader in the group and then trickle it down to the whole group. You said this is behind me. Go back to work. Just put your head down and keep on working. You know, just go do what I've been doing for the past couple of years. Just keep on finding things to get better at. Just looking at yourself, evaluating yourself, working on your flexibility, my mental. Just protecting my mental. You know, getting a peace of mind. You know, it can be crazy when you don't know what where you'll be at for a couple years or so. But just having a peace of mind. I'm mean, be huge, you know, this like now you're selling, you know where you're going. That was a huge factor too. It's like not to reset, don't know things about don't know this person name, don't know what apart, you know. This this knowing for me, this this sticking to your routine, this like knowing what expect when to come to work, knowing what type of guy I'm gonna have, you know, having JB as my coach, knowing how he teaches stuff, you know, knowing his terminology. You know, I didn't want to learn nothing new from nobody else. I mean, I, I really didn't look at the contract aspect until, like, towards the end, like, once the playoffs, like, really hit you, like, oh, it's really about the one game you out, and then you ain't got a job. But I really didn't look at it throughout the whole season. I just kept my work. I knew I can bet on myself. I've been, I been at the bottom, the bottom in in, in life, so I know what, what I can do. I mean, it's, it's different. Guys can like affect other guys in the in the market. You know, they can show you like they they can talk like they're interested in you, but they really don't be, or they can really love you and they show you love and stuff like that. But it is what it is. I mean, I don't think I want to be back in there. Just out of I mean, you you want the guaranteed money, you know. I, I knew what I wanted. Like, I, I know exactly, like, something, somewhere of what I wanted. I want to guarantee money up front. You know, you want to have a little security going into something. You know, they gave, they did a good job, like, the first beginning of it, like, getting guaranteed money, and then it's on you to take care of the rest later on. You know, you put in the work. You know what work you put in. You know if you produce, things will, things will happen like they did, like they did. This the day for me, so it don't matter what it is. I'm gonna keep on working, put my head down, and compete and get better. You mentioned that uh, you played Joe Burrow in your rookie class. What, what did you learn most about yourself in that time frame, and how, how have you applied it to your career since? I mean, this this is like over years, it's growing up. You know, adversity. You know, all my life I dealt with adversity, but then coming to the NFL, it really showed the rock bottom. I've never been. In, that much of a losing team, you know, winning only two games or one game, I don't know. I don't remember how many games we won. But it's like, it's showing like things that happen later on in life. You just got to keep on working. Thank you, RG. Thank you.
played the last year? What's the biggest change or difference you want to see in any area you know, next season in general? I think every aspect of my game, I can get better. Just don't, don't just get satisfied with how better I got in pass coverage this year. You know, I, it still got to get better. You know, I got to get more interceptions. I had like 10 pass deflections. They should have been some more pits or something like that. I want to be more like dominant in the past. Thank you. Thank you.